Welcome back to the Automation Desk. My name is Eddie. I build custom automation solutions for teams here at Low Code Systems. And in today's video, I want to go over a really cool platform that I've started to use. So if you've been researching a low code or no code platform builder, you've probably run into tools like Softer, Glide, Retool, or even more technical ones like V0, Vibercell, or Lovable. And all of these tools are really good at what they do. But today I want to cover a new player that's kind of been flying under the radar and it's called Site. So Site is built by the same team that's behind Fillout. Fillout is a really popular form builder platform that's used by hundreds, probably thousands of businesses. And so today I want to cover some of the core features of this new platform. I want to go over a project management tool that I was able to build in minutes. And then I want to do a live test to show you how it performs and whether it's a good fit for you. So whether you're a founder and operations manager, or you're just tired of hacking together solutions with Sapier or Airtable, then stay tuned because this might be the alternative you've been looking for. So let's dive in. So once you sign up, you'll be in this dashboard where you can create the traditional fill out forms, or you can create these new apps and portals with site. We're going to create an app just to kind of walk through all the core features and show you how it works. I've created a prompt here right off the bat site charges you for every request you make. So they don't even charge you for the database or the integrations. They charge you for how many times you prompt the model to do something for you. So because of that reason, I think you should create a very detailed prompt that will get you as close as possible to what you want to see instead of prompting it to do one feature at a time or adding one little thing at a time. As you can see here, I wanted to create a simple project management tool. I tell it I wanted to keep it simple. I tell it these are the key features I want. So the core features, the tables that I think it should add for the tasks, the team members and the projects. And then I tell it I want these specific views. So I want a project dashboard to see all the projects, high level overview. I want a Kanban view to view the task and edit them and move them to do in progress block. And then I want an overdue view to see anything that's kind of needs attention, the team directory. And once you have that prompt put together, you can attach anything you want. So you can attach logos, images, and you can specify how you want it to use those files or those images. You can also select your themes. They offer a bunch of these themes. I like the light modern. It's the simplest one I can use, but you can experiment with any of these other themes and don't worry about selecting it now. If you don't like it, once it creates application, you can select a different theme and it'll update the whole application to that theme. We're going to select that one for now. You can specify the model here. I'm going to leave it in recommended for now. And if you already have a database in Airtable or you're using something like Google Sheets, you can connect those immediately. For my use case, I don't have a database, so I'm going to just let it decide how it's going to create the database. And it will use the site database and it'll prompt me to create the database, but I'll just leave it like this so you can see kind of the flow once it starts building in. So I'm going to click start. And I'll come back once this is, you know, has prompted me to do something or is complete. So this is what I was referring to. The first thing it prompts me to do is that if it thinks I should use an integration, it'll prompt me specifically for the databases. So I'm going to say, yeah, let's create a new database for this application. And so We'll just let this run here. It's going to give me the tables and all the fields. You can edit this if you want to. You can edit it now or you can edit it after once the application is complete. And I'll show you that later on. But for now, we're just going to leave the default fields. They look pretty good to me. And I'm going to hit create tables. Once it creates that database, it's going to start creating the front end and it's going to connect the front end and the database using these workflows. So we'll let it finish and then we'll dive deeper into each one of those tabs and how it works. Okay, finally finished. That took a hot minute, in my opinion. Uh, it was about, I don't know, like seven, eight minutes to complete. But at least it walks you through every step and what it's doing. And now let's take a look what it actually created. So it created the nice high level overview here for the projects with the due date, the amount of tasks the team members assign. It doesn't look like this view detail button does anything, but the new project button works. You can add a new project to start due date the status. So that's something I need to prompt it to fix. Next, let's take a look at the task board. So the task board, 
I don't know how I feel. Oh, there you go. I think the screen was just a little too small, but I thought it was going to be those boxes. But this is a nice Kanban view, so I really like this view. I don't think you can drag things over, but if you select a different status, it moves it over. And you can actually hone in by project, so that's really nice that it added that. And then here we have our priority view. These are all the tasks that are blocked or are just super delayed and probably need attention. And finally, we have our team members. Really cool. We're missing an add team member button here. But overall, pretty solid start. And I want to go over a few things here. So this is the preview mode. You can obviously explore the application, but then there's this edit mode. So this lets you edit fields. It mostly lets you edit images, font, the styling a little bit. But if you want to make an actual big change to like the cards, then you probably have to prompt it. But it's nice that it lets you edit the UI, the corner rounding, the color on anything on the page. And then if you are a developer or you're interested in looking up the code, you can also click on these little bracket and view all the code for it. So here you can see you have every component that makes up the application and you can actually make changes to this and they will reflect in the front end. So if we take a look at the task board, for example, and we look for small changes to show you how this will work. So let's choose this task card. I think that'll be easier to find. Let's change, for example, this to do to not started. And so if we save that and we head over back to the application here to the projects tab, you can see that whatever changes you make in the code will reflect in the front end. And obviously here you can view it in different modes, so like mobile, maybe like an iPad, laptop and desktop. And the next thing we're going to take a look at that I found interesting about site that is very different from tools like software or lovable or V0 is that Every action is essentially a workflow. So anything from fetching data from the database or updating something or deleting something, everything is a workflow. And the idea is that these workflows can be editable. So you can come in here, you can edit some connections. I try to add new steps, but for some reason, it leads me to think that you can, but you can't. So I don't know if that's a bug, but it's okay for most of the stuff I've been doing. It's not necessary. I can just prompt the model to do it for me. But the steps that are here already, especially these code steps, you can edit them. So if, you, if you're a developer and you want to make some edits, you can do that here. For this example, we're not going to make any changes. And then lastly, we're moving over to the databases, the newest feature they released. And I think it's really cool that they did because, for example, with Airtable, although it's a great application, when you connect it to something like software or site in this example, they rate limit you, right? So they let you do about, think, I think it's like five requests per second. So if you have five to 10 users logged in at one time, then that's a problem. You're quickly going to run into those rate limits and it's really going to hinder the experience. So the fact that they have their own databases where you can directly edit things, you can view it, you can delete rows, add rows, add columns, add more tables if you like, and even create some, some views. I think it's really solid. Obviously, these views are not at the level that Airtable views are. Here you can create a view, but it's mostly to do like sorting and hiding fields, rearranging columns. And it makes sense, right? Because if you want a specific view, like a calendar or something, you can just prompt the model to build it for you on the front end. So let's head back to the application and let's take a look at some of the integrations that they offer. So they have a bunch that are still in progress and they're coming soon. Some of them look pretty exciting to me, like MailChimp, HubSpot, Stripe is a huge one in my opinion but they have some of the core ones already. So for example, if you're already using fill out and you want to embed a form directly, you can select that. You can select your form and then you can say, add a floating icon on the bottom right corner for users to report bugs through this form. All right? So I actually didn't select how I wanted that form to show, but you can select whether you want it to be, you know, in a pop up or you want it to go to a page where you fill out that form directly or you can embed it into the page. But that's OK. I just wanted to show you how that works. And uh, another cool thing that they've added already is the open AI integration. So that one's really powerful, in my opinion, because you can tell it to do things like, can you sort my task based on urgency? You know, can you like take a look at the content of the task, the due date, and then assign an urgency to it? And I'll run through something like that right now just to show you how that works. But being able to create those kind of workflow with 
OpenAI without having to use a third-party tool like Zapier or writing code is really powerful. So let's take a look. Looks like there's our report bug button and it has the slide over where you can file a report for a bug that you found. So really cool. And now let's try to do one with OpenAI. So here I've already connected my OpenAI to site, but if you haven't already, it's really easy. And then you can add instructions on what to do. So I'm gonna tell it every time a project is created. So I'm gonna tell it to create tasks automatically. So kind of like a template when a project is created, assign a team member and assign an urgency to each task based on the contents and the due date. So every time a project is created, create the following tasks. So it's gonna be or to say like, Great POC, demo POC. Oh, I can't believe I sent that, <laughs> but I wanted to add more. You're supposed to press shift enter to add more, but that's okay. We'll let that finish and I'll come back when it's done and I'll give it the full prompt so it can make the change. Or maybe let me just stop it. So if I, okay, it looks like you can just stop it. Nice. So I'm going to copy that again and I'm going to say create POC, demo POC, schedule, feedback, session and then send invoice and then i'm going to say assign the next available team member if any for the tasks assign urgency based on the due date and the content of the task we'll give it that and we'll see what it does i'll come back once it's done uh, it tends to be a little slow sometimes in creating these flows or making these edits which is a little annoying, but I mean, it creates, um, the way it works very different, right? Because it kind of has like the front end, it connects, it uses the workflows to connect to the database. And because of that, it seems that everything's streamlined, right? So it's not left up to interpretation. It's not like tools like lovable or V zero where you tell it, Hey, can you create a flow that does this? and it'll just go look the best practices or it'll just to try to do it for you with the code. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work, sometimes there's bugs. But I think because it's kind of streamlined with these workflows, there's less room for those bugs. So again, we'll wait for this to finish and I'll come back once it's done. Okay, great, so it just finished running that. So it says it added automatic creation of four standard tasks every new project, built a smart team member assignment, integrated AI to determine the task priority, and created intelligent due date scheduling across a project timeline. So let's see if that's true. So we're going to create a test here. We're just going to call it test test. We're going to select a short timeline, and we're going to say in progress. We'll say not starting for now. So create project. And there's the project. Let's take a look at the task board. It looks like it did create those steps. So create POC, demo, feedbacks, and invoice. And as you can see, it set the threshold to low or the priority to low. But if we go to the workflow, we should be able to find that exact flow. So here's the whole flow. It looks like it hits a database, runs some code, then hits a open API, open AI API. Pretty solid in my opinion. Once you're ready to publish, you can quickly hit share and you can either publish it through your domain if you want. So you probably have to configure some DNS settings, but it should be a very quick process once you're done building an application and you're happy with it. So. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about this, please leave a comment below. If you like this video and you found it helpful, like and subscribe. And if your business or you're looking for help with any automations, any internal applications or public facing applications, definitely reach out to us at lowcodesystems.com. My name is Eddie. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.